So in this video, we can see the project file UK road accident time series data set. So the project is in detail explained about we need to get the predictions of the road accident in the UK between 2005 to 2014. So, which is also include and also some limitations with corresponding to the potential causalities due to some road accident. And also most of the affected accident vary in, vary in the natures of the speed and also the high, highway authorities may not be having the notice of the road accidents. So, the safest way to conclude about this, how much accidents we, we going to be get in the futures and according to that, we can also take some kind of the safety measurements and also safety conditions like causing those accident and road types geomet geographical regions well known for this accident and along with uh, we will also take in the data set from the Kaggle so I also provide the link here if you just click on this link you will be able to see this Kaggle data set link under this you will be able to go and download the data sets with corresponding to the UK road accident so in this data set, we have different kind of the CSV file from, from particular date to particular year. So you can directly extract whichever the year you want and try to do some kind of the analysis. Then we will also go with the model building corresponding to the time series data set. So yeah, this, this UK government assumed has a traffic data from the 2000-2016. And there are so many records of font with accident data sets 1.6 million in this process they are also going the complete traffic with the corresponding with data sets and the huge picture of uh, country undergoing this change so yeah basically we have uh, from accident from 2012 2014 and 2005 2007 dot csv files so we can play around with this csv file whatever the information we had then we can go ahead with the modeling part so I'm using currently CAC uh, regarding some of the plots may not be appearing. The Google Collab having some kind of the limitations to set up. So let's try with the Kaggle. How does the Kaggle data set is going to be very helpful with corresponding to the ED analysis? Let's we can also play around with model building. So these are some of the questions we can also focus more on the EDA part so that we will get some idea and about the data analysis on this UK, UK road accident from which location to which location and also from which period to which period what exactly the trend and also the seasonality since we are already working time series analysis there so let's go with one by one question so that we will able to understand what are the important perspective of these kind of the questions then we can focus more on the model building so i am importing some of the libraries which you all can see here so these are some of the libraries which are going to be useful for plotting and also to do any kind of the 3D and also the 2D plot, the plotty and also the geo pandas. And we will also go with the matplotlib and seaborn. And the chart studio also one of the plotty library which is going to be expressed in terms of much better way we can zoom in and zoom out. So I'm importing a bunch of the CSV files as you can see here. These are some of the CSV files and also we're going to be imported those CSV files with corresponding to each and every date. So by using these each and every date information, well, we're going to be combined or maybe going to be concatenated with these files so that we will get the entire data for the UK accidents. So I'm using the UK accidents to get the concatenated and let's play around with the UK accidents data frame. So UK accident having, is there any kind of the missing values? We don't find that much of the missing values, but few of them having more than 10,000 also, more than one lakh also. So let's see how does uh, the data is looks like with corresponding to these kind of the features and how does the correspond the features needs to be helpful in terms of the ED analysis on the model building. So whoever having the greater than 10,000 null values, I'm just going to be dropping those features so that it may not be make sense to understand instead of waiting for those imputation and also perpetration purpose, we can directly drop in those columns. And along with, uh, we use it to do something called as imputation with the way of having the null values less than of the 10,000 missing values. We need to be imported with zero. So dropping the null values with corresponding to whatever the whatever the null values we had. 
and the shape is remaining is 30. So at the time we are going to be get as the shape is very high when compared to that. So 33, so three records going to be dropped with corresponding to that. So this is a data frame we are going to be play around with some of the ED analysis. We can also do some kind of the cleaning and also the pre-processing in, in, the, in the future. Accident index and the location is thing OSLT and location nothing and longitude latitude police force accident severity the number of the vehicles number of the causalities and the date so different kind of the features we are going to be play around with the time series analysis so let's go ahead with the time series analysis and try to and importing some of the database we had lad or csvs additional data sets so yeah these are some of the additional data sets we are going to be used so by in this we are going to be having osn code osn code highway authority and subgroups so in the network uh, some of the classification kind of the task we're going to be performed with corresponding to these additional data sets so in this also subgroup and subgroup description and uh, supergroup description along with the density range and also the rural range so let's let's merge these kind of the data frames which we had for the lat 3 and also the lat 4 so that we will get the common value for the both data frame, which is a subgroup. So I'm joining or merging with corresponding to these two data frames so that we will eventually get as a complete data frame. So we just drop those columns who are having the one lakh records. So more than one lakh records, we needs to be somewhat tuned or maybe somewhat paint the data sets which are having the null values. So I'm just creating the for loop so that it will eventually add whoever having the one lag record more than of the one lag record of those null values. So we are going to be drop those null values in this case. So we had two observations or two different kind of the features which were going to be having the more than one lag null values. So we are going to be drop this one. So this is the final data frame we are going to be getting at the end. And some renaming uh, with corresponding to the domain knowledge as we know. So we can we can read some of the description about the road details and also the voice sent to the lat code so some local authority the highway and along with the voice and code is nothing but a lat code the code is nothing but a lat code like that so just rename those corresponding to the columns or maybe the future so that you will able to find those kind of the nomenclature and we can also use to for joining purpose for the other data frames join with corresponding to the lad data sets along with the uk accident data set so that we will going to be get entire data sets whatever we required for merging all these things so let's play around with corresponding to the additional data sets and also the uk accidents the data sets with corresponding to the different different years so what we're going to do we are going to since it is going to be very large kind of the data sets around 1.5 million rows it is going to be converted the accident data frame for the 24th, 2014 year to get the data frame of the geo data frame. So I'm going to be extracted by using that year 2014 only so that we will eventually use that and convert into different kind of the formats and also the plotting with different, different plot libraries. So convert the accident data frame so that uh, we will eventually get 2014 records whoever having the geo, geo information with corresponding to the geo data frame. So geo data frame having only three columns with corresponding to the 18,000 records. So let's go and visualize some of the road accidents based on the different categories like region wise or maybe the settlement areas or the road network groups. So let's plot around with corresponding to the data frame so that we will be able to identify the with able to see how many records are shown in the particular areas. So I'm just using some definition like plotting the plot, mapping with corresponding the plot so that we will eventually get how many road accident occurred based on the various features. So we will eventually give some colorness and also the figure size and line weight. So these are just a functionalities in corresponding to the plot library. So if you want to go and check out the plot uh, documentations, so that you will be able to see all the information corresponding to this. So let's play around with uh, UK 2014 data sets, accident data sets, along with geometric shape 
and data frame and the region and also the country which corresponding to the future according to the regions we require and let's see so most of the plots or most of the area is occurred for the northwest england and also the scotland so in this population and also you can see the southeast england also having more around those accidents when compared to the Wales and also when compared to the West Mills in England. So let's also see with the super group name and the settlement areas. The so settlement areas having a huge impact. You can see the huge impact with corresponding to the countryside living along with town and country living or maybe maybe the urban and settlements, some of the cases. So determines with respect to the group, super groups, which correspond to settlement areas. And let's also see the road networks. How does the road networks going to be in the UK based? So, so most of them as separately networked or mixed network authorities are uh, maybe some of the cases what we're going to be see is so very sparsely network or maybe you can say the reality of authorities. So let's let's again go with few of the questions to analyze the data what is the trend of the road accidents location in uk from 2005 to 2014 so by using this trend what exactly the observations we are going to be drawn so we're going to be get what exactly the trend is from this point to this point along with the road accident in particular locations so let's see how does that going to be heard. So I'm just using the facet grid to draw this kind of the plot by using the year as a futures. And I'm also using as a hue for the region and country. With regarding, I'm using a data frame for the UK geometric data frame. So here was the trend for corresponding 2005 2014, the road accident. So different kind of the uh, plotting nature with corresponding to the latitude and also the longitude. So depending on the coloring, we are going to be see which country or which region it is. So the, the pink color, the pink color shows as the London of the England and the violet color shows as the Northwest and also the England and Northeast England. So like the different color shows, you can also see the legend here so that you will be able to identify which color it is, which color it belongs to also. So the quickly observe the values <clears throat> from this above plot series, the rate of the accidents, it's going to be geometrical distribution. So ge geographical distribution when corresponding as a pretty remind has a same location where the accident is going to be occurred in the past. So like to be same location where the accident will occur tomorrow or maybe the next slide. So which is also going to be some kind of the trending nature, which may be occurred some of the cases, right? And also due to some high accident rates in the UK between 2005 to 2014, in this year, uh, accident trend will be visually better than the either and the line plots and also the bar plots. This can be done in the in this uh, upcoming classes. So let's see how does that going to be happen. Convert all data frames into the date time format so that we will be able to get to extract the date, month, and also big days and also the month days. So I'm just extracting the date information and also the year and the day and along with the numerical type week in the month and the week in the month so that we'll able to get the month wise also data. So let's also figure out the timestamp also converting into the time delta format so that we will eventually get these kind of the time formats. And along with the hours, so we're going to be extracted by using the time so that we eventually we will get the hours also. So let's see how does that going to be helpful in terms of the other questions. The second question is what is the rate of the accidents? That means the number of the casualties in the UK between 2005 to 2014. What is the rate of a road accident based on the different UK regions? As it has been same in every region since 2005. So we need to figure out what exactly the rate of the road accident. So let's see the road uh, rate of the road accident, the number of the casualty. We need to good uh, group by some of the values so that we will going to be get corresponding to with with number of the accidents. 
So I'm using uh, UK data frame with corresponding the year we had, and let's extract those kind of the values corresponding to the 2005 to 2014. So I'm using the scatter plot to get to know about how many uh, rate of accidents we have faced. And along with, we're also providing the different colors to <clears throat> know about the uh, year and also the number of the casualties. So let's check about these kind of the scatter plot so that we will be able to understood about this number of the years of the number of casualties. You can see the line is practically decreasing at the point of 2010 and also the 2011. But some of cases 2012 is again increased when compared to whatever the value, the peak value, whatever the peak value information we had 2005, it may be slightly, slightly higher, slightly lower than that, but not, uh, but not touched in the peak value. But it has, it has been happened in the 2012, and again slightly drastically, you can say again drastically changed in the 2013, and again is slightly increasing nowadays. Maybe we can also see this pattern in the next next future. So we can conclude that spike so that we will be able to understood about why it's going to happen with corresponding to the different kind of the reasons, maybe the region or number of the causalities or maybe the different kind of the road types. So let's figure out what, what exactly the records for the different region. So I'm just extracting with corresponding the data frame what we had just go with the features for the region and country so that we will be able to identify number of causalities along with them counting for the sum for the group by. So different kind of the uh, rates of the road accident in, in the UK. So, so you can see the London and has having this hash symbol and the red color is the Northwest. So um, by using this arriving the conclusions, so you can see this hash has London having very, very less when compared to whatever the values we had on the past, like Northwest and also the pink color shows as a Southwest. So when compared to these two, it is very low. In the 22 well, it is very peaked, right? 22 well, it is very peaked when compared to all the other values. So the Northwest having the very high value when compared to the all. And you can see this is this is very narrowed kind of the plot or very narrowed kind of the line plot we're going to be seen for this pink and also the uh, shadow color and along with blue color and along with this light ash color. So the number of uh, spikes are very high when compared to whatever we have observed in 22 well. So let's also focus more on what, what exactly the some of the regions having the spikes when compared to the accidents. Let's only focus more on these whatever the spikes we had. So in the different kind of the region having different kind of the spikes as you can see the red color and also the yellow color and the blue color. So just now we, we just now drawn some of the conclusion with respect to whatever the England regions we had. So these are the four England regions are very high spike under that is the North wind is the very high spike when compared to the, all the observation. So you can draw this conclusion with corresponding to whatever the spike we had. This is regarding only for the region so that we will be able to also arrive at the solution with corresponding to the 22 will. What exactly that needs to be happened that the spike going to be increased like. And let's also check about road accidents in the UK based on the different regions. So between the 2015 and 2014, so the number of casualties we had and along with the different regions, number of casualties are very high for the Southeast as we just now seen with corresponding to the 2012 data sets. But as per the casualties we had Southeast, the first and also the London and along with the Northwest. So the northeast is very less when compared to whatever the number of casualties we have. Yeah. So there was, uh, yeah, occurrence, highest the road accidents are the southeast and also the London. So England has the list, very least, right? So northeast has the very least when compared to all the other regions. And along with, we can also figure out the way what exactly the highway authorities. So we have drawn for the region. So we know that west west south is very high when compared to the when compared to the, all the other in 2012 so let's also go with the highway authorities the most dangerous or maybe the safest in the uk based so let's play around with the accidents record whatever we have from 2005 to 2014 
so just check about the top 20 results so that we can uh, go with corresponding the highway authority uh, using the uk data sets so let's plotting with the highway authority data sets the summation with corresponding to the number of casualties so the number of casualties with corresponding to the highway authorities are kent country and the survey country and uh, last night country and xn country so with these corresponding highway authorities and let's compare it to the this one liverpool city and oxford science country and also we can also go with the safest one so whoever having the very safest one that means the lowest record which needs to be bring on top right east and where middle town and east lower town so these are some of the state based high, high highway authorities so kentron is the most not uh, not highway or the road accidents while uh, east asher is said to be very safest among all the other authorities between the 25 and the 2014 and and also you can also uh, talk about with corresponding to the which day and also the which month it is and along with what is a particular day and also the time which is also required to get to know about why that spike is increased in 2012 and what are the assumptions to get in terms of that so let's play around with country by country and along with the year by year so by using these kind of the data we can arrive the solution with corresponding to whatever the info this piece of the piece of the code is very straightforward once you get some hands on with the python and also whatever we had have discussed in the previous classes this is direct straightforward stuff. so i'm just uh, i'm just going to be skipping this part so that we will be able to focus more on the plots to get some kind of analytic of thinking so this is a plot we are going to be get for the occurrences of the road accident by weekends in the uk between 2005-2014 so day of the week this is so we're going to be get for the month and also the tuesday wednesday thursday so you can see most of the accidents or most of the causality is going to be happened on saturday okay on saturday and also the friday let's say friday and saturday but most most the peak value is saturday not as a friday when compared to all these values and very less in the monday very less in the Monday when compared to all other weekdays. So let's also see the hour wise. So we have drawn some of the conclusions only the Saturday having the very, very high peak value for all the cases for and also the all the belongs to different different kind of the countries and also the region. And along with you can see the hour wise it's slightly high for the 17 that is the 5 p.m. IST if you are Indian 5 p.m. IST when compared to whatever the I just stand for and very less in 4 a.m which is which is very uh morning days so no no traffic nothing is there right so at the time we don't have that much occurrences of the casualties so the number of accidents are very less when compared to all these cases so only only the uh, evening period we had too many accident cases from from afternoon to the evening so the we can also see those are the conclusions we can arrive from the hours and also the day of the week. We can also see the week in a month. So <clears throat> week in a month, which basically tells about which month is in the week. So that uh, so you can also see the week in a month having the fourth month. So fourth week is very high when compared to whatever we had. So so last last weekend you can say, and also the month. So different different months we had so it is something that jumbling not we can say particular peak right though so there is no kind of stationality here we we can you cannot draw some of the conclusion by using this but i would say very less in february as a pattern i can i can see here and also i would say the very high pattern uh, maybe maybe corresponding to the september to october september to october with 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 the february is a very low with corresponding to that so, so based on this weekend, we already seen Saturday is the most occur in the accidents and while is the least occur in the accident to, to, to 2005 to, to 2014. And also the based on the hours of the day in the morning hour is the very high occurrence of the, so the low accidents and 12 to 4 a.m. the least accidents with corresponding to 4 a.m. having the lowest occurrences. So based on these kind of the weekends, uh, first four weeks in a month are relatively the same regards and rate of accidents. And the fifth week is the most not frequent, so that's the reason we don't have these occurrences. Along with, we also drawn conclusion with corresponding to the month. 
the february has the least recording accidents while october having the most recording accidents so it depend and same average kind of the ratio is also present in the may and july that, that's the reason this is not a stationary we cannot draw some of the conclusions corresponding to this and let's also see on uh, which particular road or the network group having the base most dangerous or the maybe safest one so we're going to be drawn some of the conclusion with regarding the region and also the time and also the with corresponding to the number of occurrences right so we can also see with corresponding to the network groups or the particular road so we can also have the data set with corresponding to the subgroup descriptions so by using that we can arrive some of the solution with corresponding to the different kind of authorities so yeah these are the very sample description with corresponding subgroups we can draw some of the conclusion with respect to this and along with we can also do some kind of the visualization with the subgroup description and the road networks with the uk lower or uh, the highest records so i'm just going to be plot with corresponding to the bar plots which maybe tells about what are the different authorities we had with corresponding to the number of casualties so the number of casualties are very more in the sparsely networked rural authorities and very less for very sparsity network very rural scotic island so so we, we can dare some conclusion with corresponding to the road type so that we will eventually get what exactly the information with corresponding to the road type also so single carriage highway so this this may be having very number of casualties and some are unknown so unknown may be drawn from the different kind of the perspectives so they may not be named or properly but eventually we can the slip road having very less number of casualties so we can draw some of the observations so that we will be able to identify so sparsely network ruler authority road network has the high occurrences of the road in the wild <clears throat> UK and very very sparsity network ruler Scots Creek Island Road network has the least occurrences. Single carriage are the high occurrences when compared to the all. So we can also derive the solution for the what condition taking all this into account. So whether the road or light conditions cause with the most number of the accidents. So we determine the surface conditions, right? So what exactly the surface condition, weather conditions we do have. So let's play around with a couple of the data sets so that we will arrive the solution with corresponding to this. So, yeah, so what exactly the columns we're going to get? So the unique number of the records with corresponding to this is uh, temperature, dry, and also snow, flood, like this, weather conditions also remaining this. So let's play around with kind of the group by data set so that we'll eventually get some kind of idea and analysis over these kind of the results so different different conditions having the different on um, different uh, summation and also the <clears throat> number of casualties so let's say so fine without high winds and day light and also the street light as present that means there are so many fine results having the number of casualties are very high only few of them so let's say fog or maybe the snow snowing without high winds a darkness sleet lighting unknown maybe so fine with the high winds okay so this is fine without high winds okay so fine with high winds which are having the very low causalities it does not affect the road where vehicle may not be but it simply has the most become the road accidents are going to be set like that fine weather condition without a high winds so that that is going to be very dry road conditions at the time so that it will eventually drop on the other hand we can also see the more number of accident does not occur there is a flood or maybe the darkness of the snow so the next question is in this the analysis so drawing some of the questions and conclusion with corresponding to the plots so we will eventually get good understanding of the exploited data analysis so that we will be able to identify these kind of observations into your modeling prospect also. <clears throat> so is periodization crossing a cause of the road accident or maybe the influence of the road causalities in the UK? So we have periodization crossing different kind of the columns. Let's check out them what exactly the distinct kind of the conditions under the periodizations. So these are the different distinct conditions with no physical or pretension phase, the traffic signal, signal, signal junction or non-junction. 
So let's play around with these kind of the plots so that we will be able to identify with corresponding to what exactly the bridge station with number of casualties. So non with the 50 meters, no physical crossing within 50 meters. So these are the very high when compared to all the other and very less with compared to the control by school and also the crossing the petrol maybe. So commonly does not occur the registrations of uh, crossing maybe do not may not be affected with corresponding the road accidents in the UK between 2005 to 2014. So the next question is how many number of casualties occur per accident in UK? What is the distribution in terms of total amount road accident that going to be occurred in this? So we need to know number of uh, number of the casualties occurred by the accident in UK along with the distribution also. So let's plot about the distribution as we already know about how does the distribution going to be works out. The frequency of the distribution, it is not normal distribution, but it's having some skewedness with the right. So, the, so let's plot with corresponding the number of the vehicles. So this number of the vehicles we had. Distribution is completely at rightly high skewed. We already know this is similar to the similar of the vehicles also, rightly high skewed. At the speed limit, what exactly the speed limit with corresponding to get the road accident? The speed limit is very very average is 30, but mean mean value is 30. That is the way. But violating has a 60, 70 is also very high when compared with all the other values. That may be cause one of the number of casualties are very high. So which area having uh, road accident the more frequent and also the what is the distribution for the severity. So let's plot about the region wise distribution so that we will be able to understand with the focus of the pipe plots. So yeah, you can see the distribution may be happened with corresponding to this is around 80 to 14 percent. So it, it, it does not include any kind of the two or three standard deviation with corresponding to the percentage of these road accidents. The so occurrences of these two accidents are very high when compared to the road and accidents also. So most of the road accidents are very slightly severity. Okay, so on the victim side also the minute of the road accidents is better. So we can also see uh, in the next next video for the model building for the time series analysis so that we will be able to identify the future predictions of the UK road accidents. Thank you. So in the second project, which we had as a classical task, which is going to be performed into the mushroom classification. So let's try to understood about the classification task in this case study. And also we require to know about the different kind of the methods and techniques to understand. So let's get started. And we require as these kind of the steps to completing this process or the project. So problem statement is the first definition, what exactly which consisting of and how does that going to be looks like. And along with the data cleaning and also the pre-processing steps, what are the required steps needs to be performed and by using the data set we had. And also the exploited data analysis, we can perform some of the use cases scenario based so that we will be able to understand the insights from the raw data set. And along with some of the benchmark classical, uh, classical ML models, they're going to be performed. Those may be consisting of different kind of scenarios, maybe hyperparameter to technique, or maybe the K4 cross validation techniques. So building on top of the machine learning model uh, and also the evaluation, then testing and also the validation with corresponding to the mushroom. So I hope you already know about the mushrooms. Uh, there are so many different types of the mushrooms, but one such scenario which we had is very important problem for many people is edible and also the poisonous. So which are two important problems for the many people. The classification process can be done using the different mushrooms as the features. So what happened, uh, we need to be classified which mushroom it is. So there are the each the data set consisting the UCI repository. If you just click on this link, you will be able to find the data set corresponding to the mushroom classification task. So the UCI, those you all don't know about the UCI repository, which is the machine learning repository for the, all the different different data sets, which may be worked with the <clears throat> classification task and also the regression task, or maybe the time series data. So that you can download the data set from here or else I will share the data sets with you in the description link so that you can download from that. 
so in this data we had different kind of the mushrooms i hope already you have seen the mushroom is maybe looks like this so we need to be classify which you know, mushroom it is so then we can pose this problem into the machine learning and they can showcase as a data set some of the information which we are going to be required so the data set consisting of different kind of the samples so there are 23 species of the gilled mushrooms in the agrinus and also the lepidus family so which we are some kind of the domain knowledge which you going to be required from the domain experts but currently we can have the data sets from the uci repository they already had a made set up with corresponding to whatever the domain knowledge we had so each species is identified the different definitely edible and also the poisonous so these kind of edibility and poisonous are very kind of you can say which is anonymous to the many people so unknown edible and not recommended that one also so this kind of the classification we can combine with the poisonous one and also the guide clearly states that there is no simple rule for determining the edibility for the mushroom so there is no kind of the simple rule to determine the edible but we can have the rule for the poisonous we can combine it with the latter class so that we can use by using that poisonous class at all. So that is a problem statement which we are going to be work with by using this kind of the data sets. So uh, poisonous will be going to be take classified by using the edible also. Let's also perform some of the data cleaning steps and try to understand post this problem into the ML. So we have just imported a bunch of the libraries so that we will able to reuse these libraries again and again. So I'm also importing the data sets which we had with different kind of the values. So, so raw data sets which we had with corresponding the 12, to, uh, two, 12 different kind of the columns and also the more than 12 columns also. Let's pose this into somewhat more detailed way so that to get to know about the data sets. So you can see something called as the poisonous and also the edible which consisting of P and also the E, okay. So P means poisonous and E means edible. So we, by using these kind of that <clears throat> independent features, we are able to identify this target column. And also some other features, which we require domain knowledge, obviously, currently we don't have that much of domain knowledge. You can stay with some kind of that nature kind of stark surface below ring is nothing but whichever having, let's say in this diagram, this is the stark surface, okay. So below ring, so this is a ring, and this will be having this kind of the circular nature. So this kind of the ring we use it to call it as star surface nature. So if you go and check out some kind of the domain nomenclature or domain terminology, you will be able to find this kind of the columns and also the features. What, what exactly that means is, and also what, what exactly the value consisting of S for that and W for that like that. So to know about some of the data set, the mushroom data set having how many rows and also the columns, just for understanding and just giving some information with, with this kind of the data set. So let's get started with this. So we have different kind of entries. So 8,100 records around. So which add having the different kind of the data types, which may be having the object level and also some of the other strings label, right? So let's consider we don't have any kind of the missing values. You can also see that. And let's let's go and detailly discuss about some of the other characters are maybe involved and what exactly the feature in that in hacks you're going to be performed with using some of the raw data sets consisting of. So before going to that, you need to understand what exactly the feature is, right? So B for bell and um, C for conical and X for convex and F for flat and K for crop and S for sunnex. So depending on the cap shape, okay, so this, this is a cap, okay, so this is a cap. So depending on the cap shape, it needs to be identified with corresponding to those kind of the symbols, B for bell like this. And cap surface also, so F for fibrous and G for ghost and Y for scaly and S for smooth. So cap color, cap surface, cap shape and bushes and all the and gill adjustment and gill spacing, gill size. So depending on, you can see these kind of terminologies and try to understand the way whatever you are going to put it out. So you can read out this so that you will be able to get some informative by using the feature. Features we are going to be applied to get which mushroom is it is. 
So then we can try on that pose into the different kind of the prospect to understand more in terms of the feature engineering we have. So some of the feature engines I'm just applying here so that you will be able to get some idea and understood about those kind of the values to take some consideration. So I'm just displaying the descript, described. So described is basically helpful to understood about some of the values we are going to be get as part of the each and every variable consisting of what distribution it is. And also we can also find the unique values the way which we're going to be get. So the unique values with corresponding to each and every columns has looks like this. So I'm just <clears throat> converting to into the list so that uh, we will going to be get as a list, a number of the unique values in one, one list. So the class having P and E, we already know about this is the target column and the cap size, which we heard about these, these kind of the values and along with the cap color and all the, the gill attachment and along with the population habitat. So these kind of observations is going to be very helpful. Just, just to want to write in the simple English where we already know about that, right? So to, to understood about any other person's users, you want to be deal with these kind of the conclusions at a time. So there are strange values in the stock root and the column, such as these kind of in this kind of the strings. So you can see the stock root consisting of these kind of the strings, but this this kind of the question mark, okay. This kind of the question mark may not be helpful at the time of you are doing some of the pre-processing steps or maybe the model building. So that, that we had to be representing some of the missing values, would say, discussed over in the some of the distribution functions. So valley type column having only the one value, which means the column does not affect the, the class of the mushrooms, okay? So may, if, if suppose you are going to be classified with your uh, poisonous and also the edible, you have only the one column value. So the same for the, all the observation, it's going to be removed from the data set. That may not be ideally with the situation in the data processing, right? So we can, we can remove those kind of the unwanted columns and also unspecified column values. So let's have a look on the date observation with responding to the distributions. So I'm plotting the subplots with corresponding to different, different kind of the information to showcase in, in terms of the different plots. So let's have a look about these kind of the plots by using your count frequency of the each and every value. So have a look about this class. So it is not imbalanced data set, but it's having slightly bad balance. So at the time, this will be okay. So whenever you find any kind of the balance or imbalanced data set, it must be around 80 to 90, 80 to 20% maybe. Or uh, if you can find it out the 70 to 30 percent, that that may be having some other hacks to follow with to balance. But now it's a very okay for 40, 4,000 and also the this one is 3,000 and that is just a 300 different that is the okay. But you can also try it with the other features. What they what, how does they looks like right? So let's try with the cap shape first and caps information first. So cap information having X as the very high value when compared to the F and also the B. So you can see the F and B will be very highly correlated with cap surface and also the cap color. Okay. So depending on the cap shape and also the surface, it needs to be identified the edible and also the poisonous. So at the time it, it needs to be deleted. Some of the some of the unnecessary points are maybe looks like that. So it has a very less when compared to that and so seal. So what about the information with the boost and also the other and the gill attachment and the gill spacing? So you can look out. This is slightly, slightly okay, but you can see this might be having very huge difference when come very, very di normal difference, but you can see the huge difference better in the count of them, right? F and T. And also you can see this all are very low when compared to the whatever we had as an in value and also the F values. So slightly we had the detachment with corresponding to this and also the attachment is so 7914, which is very huge when compared to this to total only, right? So this kind of the observation, you can little write down with a couple of the steps to predict these kind of the classes. So just for understanding, you can also get some more, you can, you can also draw on some with subplots and also the correlation plot. Then you will able to easily get some kind of the understandable, these kind of the information. So let's also look at you know, what are the drawn edges going to be well put into this one. So class variable we already seen and some of the variable gill attachment. This is also we already seen. 
and the plot is made easier notice that the value type as mentioned earlier yeah value type is very less right so value color this is yeah value type is very less so yeah we, we can ignore this kind of the columns at the at the uh, model building and also the pre-processing steps so at the time it, it needs to be deleted right and also the stack <clears throat> And also the stack root missing is denoted as question mark. We all we already occupied with that. So question mark may not be helpful at the time of doing any kind of the visual analysis and also the model building, right? So this is very high value. So we need to be computed with corresponding to whatever we are going to be performed with categorical values. So then we can approximately get 30% of the <clears throat> missing values. So I have to think about that. If I had a many high number of the missing values, we can try to go with some kind of the imputation mechanisms with majority vote, or we can also try to do with some of the calculation to perform as a mean or mean. Let's go with the flow. So what will happen if we're going to be find any kind of the direct relationship between the each and every variable? So we're just to perform up to the univariable analysis. Let's also perform the bivariate analysis. So let's look on to this kind of the plot, which basically tells about the count of the each and every class with consisting of different kind of the features we are going to be applied. So by, by using the class variable P and E, right? So these kind of the class variables we are going to be showcased. You will be able to see the different, different kind of the visualizations. So according to that, you can drag some of the conclusions easily, right? So whichever having the order as a P, okay, so order as a P and a class, uh, this one, what is this? So this order, uh, sorry. So this is the P and this is the R. This is sorry, this is the F. We will conclude as a P class. So like that. And also you can see F and also this having the N, you can conclude it as a P class. You can see this is very high when compared to this. This is very low when compared to this. Similarly, this one, this one, this one, this one, right? So you can conclude easily first conditions to observe these kind of the values right at the time. So for that, we required this kind of the observation to write it down in the algorithm so that it will be able to understand well and also the give some kind of the good intuition behind this kind of the probability of the values. Yeah, some of the drawbacks from uh, some of the observations from these groups have the two different values, true and also the false. And the probability of these mushrooms is uh, edible going to be increases if the brucious value is going to be t so if suppose this uh, is going to be somehow mushroom classification okay but the time we require to get the brucious values as a two t or false okay true true or false it may be basically tells about the probability of the mushroom the edible going to be increased or not similarly the ordinal value similar order variable having the strong relationship with the target variable so what happened uh, since it has the most most of the values are going to be uh, related to the one leak one class. So for example, P, F, C, Y, S, M, right? So these kind of the values are going to be seen in the poisonous dashboard. And uh, B is a buff, right? So this buff is consisting of, this buff is consisting of only grid color. This will always be classified as a poisonous. So that's that's all we we require to delete some of the, these things so that it needs to may not be having this much of bias towards the only one class. So sports print color also will be important variable in a, in our model. So as per the ordinal value. So let's also look about the visualizing the things for the sports print color so that we will be able to understand about what exactly it does. Okay. So let's see. So whoever having uh, the print color, so you you know, right, the print color is nothing but what exactly the color consisting of on this. So let's see in this case, we're going to be get the color as a black in the green, uh, chocolate color and white color or the brown color. So depending on these kind of the colors, it's going to be identified with corresponding to the sport print color has a poisonous and also the edible. So in the next video, we're going to be seeing as the data preprocessing and also the model building. So let's also look about the tokenization mechanism since we already preprocessing with a couple of the regular expressions. So the regular expressions what we had used number before. So we can take and do some kind of the punctuations to remove and also the special characters to remove. And the tokenization currently we are applying the directly from the Keras library. 
those who have already know about the keras is the one of the good good library for to do kind of the pre processing or maybe the model building or the deep learning concepts so currently we are using the tokenization mechanisms to convert from text to numerical so that it will able to identify the corresponding different kind of the punctuations and also converting to the lower case and the number of the words we are taking as a top words so stop words uh, we already know of it those who already know about the stop word this is one of the stop words we need to be included or excluded some of the cases so in this project we are going to be excluded with corresponding different kind of the stop words in the model building we are going to be removed this one but as of the ed analysis we are not going to remove anything else along with comment sequence we are also retrieving the yeah. one of other column comment sequences which basically commenting with corresponding the different kind of the sequences and converting into the lower case so this is a one of the random comment so which consisting of different different words which consisting of the comment sequence so let's also analyze the what exactly the maximum length and also the appropriate it corresponding to the maximum length we have so the maximum length of a word or the length of the comment is 13999 so this much of the length we had we can also tokenize by using this much of the length to analyze the data with corresponding the tokenization mechanisms the sequence of the sequence of the lengths also will be matter so let's calculate by using the sequence of the length and we need to be analyze the data with corresponding the how much percent of the comments have the more than 10 words or the 50 words or the 500 words or the 400 words or 1000 words so that we will able to get some kind of idea of understanding with corresponding to the percent of the comments have the more than 10 or uh, more than 1200 words so more than 1200 words have the 0.01 percentage when compared to the all the other words have the 200 words have the 5 percent of the values along with the 16 percent of the values having the 100 words and 35 percent of the values having the 50 words only so that depends on the words how much size is in. and you can also say the max word is the 13 1900 so it is very less when compared to that so yeah by using we can also going for the rnn see because since it is a very sequential way of doing the with computation power also very low when compared to the whatever the words we had we are going to be choose cut off of the 300 words since we already have the 1900 words you can see 1000 and the words are having the 300 words having the very good so we can informative way to go this and uh, try to do with corresponding the toxic class classification task so let's also visualize the things much better so getting the uh, word count and also the word plot if you already know about the word plot plot this is very straight forward so let's also visualize the things much better the frequency of the words who are having the comment traits or maybe the other traits we could be get by using insult comments and also the identity comments who are having the different kind of the comments with corresponding to the frequency of the each and every word so most of the words having different kind of the terminologies you can also see with this color plotting so that we will able to identify these kind of the stuff with much better when compared to so with the toxic comments and we can also plot uh, we can also plot something called as a word plot this is very useful whenever you want to go with the visualization things in much better in the ed analysis so those who don't know about the word plot this is a direct a word plot with consisting of the shape of the size is very more occurrence frequency and shape of the size is very less that is coming as very low frequency of the words so here you can see really explanation background so these are some toxic words that going to be presented with corresponding to these words and under this we have another words with corresponding to work and previous think observed and type sentiment some kind of the toxic word we going to be get it from this so sophisticated demographic but not exactly the words we are going to get by using this kind of statements the clean comments and also the toxic comments thank you so since we already learned about some of the classification and the regression projects let's also get started with the nlp related classification task so which is consisting of the tox comments classification so uh, the basically the analysis of this wikipedia comments we going to be extracted by using the kaggle data sets so once you click on this link you will able to go to this kaggle data sets under this kaggle data sets you will able to find the jigsa Uh, the different comment sections and also the we this is the online comment uh, 
competition at the time they have provided five years ago. So the data set description is looks like this. They have extracted with the large number of the Wikipedia comment, which we have been labeled by using the human raters for the tox behavior. So tox behavior may be some of the different kind of the insult or maybe the options or several kind of the inherited identification of the hate and along with the sexual abuse. So depending on the toxic comment, we need to be classified them, which is the toxic comment or not. So there is a basic kind of the model building we need to be construct by using these kind of the values. And also you can see by using the description function, we, they are provided with the training data sets and also the test data sets. If you want to be performed well with compared to the test data sets as well. So let's get started with the ED analysis by using this kind of the task. And also let's understood about the, some of the introductionary about this kind of the technology and JITSA and bid where it's going to be platformed and when it's going to be founded. So Jitsa is founded, initiated by using the Google as a, now it is the part of the alphabet. So both will want to work as a tool to improve these kind of the online conversations. So one area of focus is mostly for the study of these negative online behavior, like toxic comments, such as rude behavior or disrespectful. Otherwise you can say someone leave the discussion kind of stuff. So what happened publicly, if, if you have these kind of the models to solve entire the prospective API, so including toxicity also, but the current model still has some of the mistakes or maybe they, have, they didn't allow users to select which type of toxicity it is. So that is a major finding here. So once we fix those issue, what exactly the toxic comment we have to be removed, then it should be model performed well when compared to what exactly the problem statement we are working on. So uh, ML mapping to the ML problem, we need to build a multi-headed model that needs to be capitalized of the detecting of the different types of the toxic, like treats or obscenity or insult or identity-based the hate better than the prospective current models. And also we're going to be use the data sets, Wikipedia talks for the different kind of the edits and improvement to the current model. And that needs to be well for the respective and also the productive way of doing that model to remove the toxic comments. So some of the data set uh, kind of the columns or maybe the futures we're going to be seeing, we have toxic and the sort of taxing, obscenes and treat, insult and identity hate. So we can use by using the probability score so that you will be able to understood about which hold of the comment having this much of toxicity to detect it. So let's get started with ED analysis first. Then we will go dive deep into the data cleaning and also the pre-processing steps. And we can go for the data building model by using the different LLP techniques, whatever we have already implemented on top of the other data sets. So I'm just importing some of the NLP related libraries, which we are going to be useful and with recording the plotting and also the understanding of the ED analysis and also some plotting techniques. So this start and end time will be enabled us when the cell it needs to be started, when the cell it needs to be ended. So whenever we want to require how much time it needs to be taken, we can directly use this function print time. I'm just mounting my data set, which is already present in my Google Drive. So which have the train.cs and also the test.csv. So you can also see with corresponding to some of the null values which are present in the toy data sets, which will be extracted by using the percentile of the values. So I'm just created a function with corresponding to the null percentage, which basically tells about how much percentage of the each and every future we had going to be extracted. So size and how much size it the totally have and how much percentage of the missing values we are going to be extracted using the percentage and also the NAN value so that it will give the not it's zero kind of the values or not. So checking the nulls, we're going to be give that much of the informative to get it for using the null percentage. So as you seen in this uh, printing statement, there is no any kind of the null values or the missed values, right? So that data should be fine. So let's get started with ED analysis. Just quickly look about the, some of the futures and the home and records we do have. So the futures we had has a eight, eight futures and the records we had around 1,50,000 plus. So this, this much of the record or 1,50,000, around 1,50,000 record we're going to be get rid by using the toxic comments. 
this is a sample um, sample uh, one of the record which had id the person's id and along with the comment they have text by using the toxic or so toxic on hate or not be hate so by using this we going to be understood about the problem and we are going to be do some kind of the id analysis so that everyone else is going to be look upon how many rows we have for the different kind of the toxics and how does label feature engineering will going to be help in this project so let's get started with how many rows are in this toxics so i'm just giving the toxics numbers so that it will summarize the total number of the toxics values and also creating the overall any label feature so what happened any label we had something called as any label by using this any label we are going to be attached with corresponding to the toxic rows whatever the toxic rows we had and also creating a dictionary to store some of the values we were having the count results and along with the other count results with respect to the target column we are going to be extracted so the target column i'm going to be assigned to the total number of this selection process so that it needs to be appended with the toxic columns so i'm also plotting the heap map to get to know about the how does the comments is going to be showcasing along with the heap map also will give as a comment type so yeah training the comment and along with comment values so let's get started with how does the percentage of the comments and how does the heap map will shows like this so tox toxic and so taxes has very huge correlation when compared to the all and also you can see so taxic and also the insult have some of the correlation and along with insult and toxic have some of correlation between them insult and options also can correlations so let's also analyze the data how does it going to be helpful in terms of the classified as a toxic so total 15000 plus records for the toxic comments for 9.5 or the overall data percentage so by using this we are going to be get it from 10% were as a sir taxic and also the 51% are the options and 2.9% are the trait so identification by using this toxic comments so soft to 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 toxic comments also have this much of the data but nevertheless the toxic and also server taxes will be the same you can see 100% will be the toxic same as the whatever the val variables we are going to be give from this values so depending on the data sets we are going to be perform currently we are using as a jigsaw toxic comments data sets and also the obscen comments also will be the same as a toxic values and along with obscen and also the insert so this much of the insert values and also the identity hate values will give as a number of the types and also check about this plot so this plot tells about just a second yeah this plot tells about which comment type counts okay so toxic had very high and also any label so it had all the consisting of the label and along with the toxic so the max number of the toxic comments are very high when compared to the, all the other so and also the insult and also the identity head on options is the second one right so you can write a simple english way so that we will easily understood by using this kind of the analysis along with above heap plot and along with slightly go with the next step so what what happened in this cell is we are just giving some naval information to get to know about the how many comments is needs to be cleaned so we have different kind of the comments just now we already seen that must be depending on the or what are the different kind of the proximity we are going to be get from by using the target values so let's say we can simply see the label here is toxic comment e that hardly an attack c wifely constant barrage identity so these kind of the words right identity and attack so these kind of the personals so these kind of the words are most to be toxic kind of related stuff and some other uh, false side story and is the fuck and this fandel different kind of right so this kind of the words and maybe comes under the toxic information so toxic and i will give a proof doni is a rajput check it likely this open link right so this kind of uh, information with regarding the sort toxic and what about the other one yeah no kind of these words are right so in the, in terms of 
toxic comments it needs to be validated and along with needs to be get rid for using those so depending depending on the different kind of the symbols they're going to be used at the time so it must be satisfied with toxic comments and along with the other tweet comments so this is a tweet comment right so label is a tweet here and also different kind of the labels you can also show with a couple of the examples so that you will be able to identify with corresponding to this so yeah this is a summary basic summary interesting takeaways from this is toxic is represent 90% of the other category and throughout all the appearance at the first glance sub categories of the toxic okay who will going to be served with the sub toxic with the 100% of the time and also you can see toxic isn't actually overall category okay so some of the attributes are the toxic ends up with descending most of the insults that may be triggers or hate comments or maybe the overstatements so we don't have any actual definition for the classification okay so we can we cannot know exactly what they mean by for example also right so identity hate comments may not be <clears throat> added with toxic that may be true some of the cases right so if it was a higher 99 percentage i would say it's going to be labeled there maybe or uh, just make the toxic overall the category that may be some make some assumption to know about the true when when other categories not may be true so at that time we are going to be showcase like that stuff so let's get started with some of the future engineering hacks so length of the each and every comment word so we going to be extracted with by using different functionalities to use so i'm taking as average toxic comment length by using the mean mean function so toxic average comment length the label is a one so i'm taking as the label for the length of the word uh, length of the toxic comment word is 303 and the length of the clean comment is clean comment length is a 403 and along with toxic comment the label one the median value and also we are going to be extracted with couple of the percentile values so percent of the capitalized character in toxic comments okay so just taking the mean value and corresponding to the way it is going to be calculating the percentage so 14% of the percent of the characters and capitalized and also the clean capital is also 5% so let's let's also focused on the word length so these are all very important to uh, generate any kind of the future engineering hacks so that we will be able to understand data by using this understood about the percentile while and also the frequency of the words so average word length for the toxic comments is 4.1 so average each and every word having 4.1 kind of the word and the clean comments having the 4.4 and and also we can see explanation with correspondence of the words in toxic comment is 3.5 so which regards explanatory mark okay so whoever having the character of the explanatory mark it needs to be get rid by using those kind of the comments at 3.5 average average kind of the words and also the question who are having the different kind of the question that may not be having some kind of the question marks in the toxic comments maybe they are asking a question or maybe they are asking explanatory mark to understand some other data sets right so by using the regular expression we are just cleaning the data because since we already have this much of the noisy kind of the stuff explanatory marks question marks and also we have get it by using the different kind of the symbols and also we need to clean by using the different kind of the special characters in the in the data or the tox comments so at the time we use it to clean this kind of the data removing the unwanted characters and also special character we use as a regular expression so once we call this function strip ip the everything will becomes with the cleaning text so that we can automate this process while doing the model just for the preparation for the ed analysis we just go on to the this regular expressions so let's also we are going to be get regarding the each and every label the overall summary how does that going to be helpful with corresponding to the label counts and also the label overlap summary so let's get started with label count how many labels we are going to be get so we have different kind of the toxic comments right so with different kind of the classification tasks we need to be performed by using the nlp so one label that is consisting of the toxic results and also we have added any label that may not be considered right now we just extracted with the taxi label and also the options right so the options having also the win the percent of the label having the toxic is very high 39.2 
and the options having the 25.99 with corresponding to the different kind of this completely imbalanced data sets once we understood about the concepts with regarding the different kind of the taxes labels and along with what we going to be do splitting of this data for the training data set so from the training data sets we are going to be split this into different kind of the labels so once we are going to be understood about the toxic comments and several toxic comments options and treat and insult and identity hate or any label so i'm just to get rid from by using this to take as a comment text and length and caps word length and explanatory mark and question so taking this kind of the labels and also the training data 